In this video, we're going to look at the first half of the main 14 gods of Olympus. We'll start with the oldest of these gods, and whilst it does vary depending on the source, it was usually said to be Aphrodite. But despite being the oldest, she was widely considered to be the most beautiful. So much so, that she was even the goddess of beauty, love and sexuality. And because of this, she was also the goddess of all prostitutes and any sex workers. She herself had many lovers and suitors, but eventually married a god called Hephaestus. The most common symbols associated with Aphrodite were apples, roses and either a swan or a dove. Next, we move on to the children of Cronus. The oldest of these six children was Hestia, the goddess of hearth and home. She was one of the three virgin goddesses, swearing that she would not marry out of purity. In general, Hestia was much less self-absorbed and power-hungry than the rest of the gods. This is one of the reasons that there are fewer stories from mythology that directly involve her. One thing we do know about Hestia is that the Greeks had a fire they kept constantly alight in dedication to her. Therefore, one of her main symbols was fire, as well as the donkey and the sacrificial pig. The next oldest Olympian was a goddess called Hera. Hera was the wife of Zeus, making her the queen of Olympus. She was the goddess of marriage, women and family. Hera loved animals and at times was a benevolent and friendly goddess. However, she was also very jealous. Whenever she found out her husband was involved with another woman, she would often take excessive vengeance. And usually, this vengeance was directed at the women Zeus slept with or the offspring produced from these affairs, rather than at Zeus himself. The most common symbolism found with Hera was the pomegranate, the peacock and the lily. After Hera, we move on to the next daughter of Cronus, Demeter. Demeter was the goddess of agriculture and crops. In fact, she even gave mankind corn and taught us how to farm. Since the ancient Greeks lived in an agricultural society, she was seen as a very important deity. She was mother to Pisonophe after a fling with Zeus, and she had more children with other suitors, but Pisonophe was the most notable. The most common symbols we see associated with Demeter are bread, wheat, and the cornucopia. Next, we move on to arguably the most famous Greek gods, the three sons of Cronus. The oldest of these was Hades, god of the underworld. This was his abode and where he would spend most of his time. He was also the god of riches and wealth, due to the precious metals under the ground that lay within his domain. And despite his role as god of the underworld, he was the most benevolent of his brothers. For he was one of the few gods that did not ruin the lives of mortals out of petty anger or a need for entertainment. He married Pisonophe, the daughter of his sister Demeter, and she became the queen of the underworld. The symbolism most associated with Hades was his helmet of invisibility, his two-pronged spectre, and the white poplar tree. He was also often accompanied by his large, multi-headed, beast-like dog, Cerberus. The next god we're looking at was the god of the sea, Poseidon. His home was in the oceans in a grand palace that he built. However, he still spent a lot of time up in Olympus with his fellow gods. The value of the sea for trade and travel to the Greeks meant Poseidon was very important to their society, which also meant they feared his infamous wrath. Because Poseidon was the bringer of earthquakes, he could flood entire cities and he had the ability to make an entire island appear or disappear as he willed. Much like his brother Zeus, he liked to sleep around, could be very poor tempered and was known for extreme vengeance. Poseidon was also known as the god of horses, as he created the very first horse as a gift. His most common symbolism was the famous trident that he would often wield, as well as most of the underwater animals, and of course all horses were associated with him. Finally, we move on to the youngest of these seven gods of Olympus the king himself, Zeus. Zeus was ruler of the gods and lord of justice. He had controls of the skies, the lightning and the weather. And his rise to being king of the gods is an interesting story in itself. In fact, Zeus was involved in many of the stories we have from mythology. Due to his desire 
to mess around with other gods or interfere with mortals, especially when he saw a woman that he fancied. He was quick-tempered and rash, yet he could also be fair and just. Zeus's most well-known symbol was no doubt the lightning bolts that he would wield, but he also had the symbol of Aegeus associated with him and both the eagle and the bull were his most famous animals. So this gives us the first half of the 14 main gods of Olympus. In part 2, we'll be looking at the other 7, the second generation. For now, let us know who your favourite is from this video, and if you want to hear more stories or information about them, you can subscribe to our channel to keep updated. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and thank you for watching.